Due to the recent disaster that struck Colombia, there has been a shift in the public's view of the water system. Citizens are starting to become more aware of the water system state. They are starting to know its flaws and what needs to be done. It has recently come to the EPA's attention that raw sewage has been leaking into the city of Colombia's waterways, leading to increased levels of harmful bacteria in recreational and drinking water. Four years ago, the EPA mandated that the city of Colombia spend $700 million on updates to the sewer systems and waterways. Just two years ago, the EPA slapped a $1.5 million fine on the city of Colombia for noncompliance. Where has this left the city of Colombia today? Spending billions of dollars after a thousand year flood event that caused damage to sewers, waterways, and dams. Even during less devastational rains, the sewer systems of Colombia fail in lower regions such as Five Points. Sewer systems back up and overflows occur, partially because of bad piping and just bad placement in general. The city of Columbia's pipes are old and aging. Some are over 70 years old without replacement or maintenance. In 1993, the city of Columbia approved the use of revenue achieved through water and sewer system customers for unrelated expenditures. They took out $78.6 million from the fund between 1999 and 2010 and have been taking $4 million annually since then. This money was not spent on upgrades or even badly needed repairs. Instead, it was used for other city needs and projects. By 2013, this neglect led to the threats of a takeover of our water system and sewer systems by the EPA, along with a fine of $1.5 million. Nothing was done. Now, two years later, the EPA has reiterated its threat of a takeover and mandated that $750 million be spent to fix the system over the next five years. This amount does not include future repairs or upgrades that may be needed along the way. It is likely the City of Columbia will end up spending over $1 billion on our sewer and water lines when it's all said and done. This is a huge bottom line. To achieve this type of revenue, rate hikes are inevitable. Currently, the city is considering a 12% rate hike. This translates to about a $6 monthly increase for city residents and about a $10 monthly increase for those who reside outside of the city, averaging about $8 per household. This will be the first of five consecutive annual rate hikes. Without knowing exactly what costs will be in the future, the city council will have to vote every year on how much to increase water and sewage rates. To reach even the minimum goal of $750 million, it will require the council to consistently vote for relatively high rate hikes, not something they're known for doing. Furthermore, the money that's annual, annually removed must stop. For the last two years, they have reduced the amount by $250,000. While they should be commended for this effort, we still must do much more to alleviate our dependence on these funds. The question is, why should customers be forced to pay increased rates to fund Mayor Benjamin's pet projects, such as the renovation of Bull Street and the new baseball stadium, whenever this money was illegally transferred from the water and sewer funds? A recent Supreme Court hearing mandated the City of Columbia transfer $13 million, the last three years' worth of illegally funneled funds, back into the city, the city water and sewer accounts. However, with the bill being approximately $750 million and increasing with the day after the devastating floods, who knows if this is going to be enough. There's been a debate in local government over the City of Columbia's use of funds mandated to be spent on sewers and waterways. Should the city be able to spend surplus money on extra projects that do not involve the water and sewer system? The key term here is surplus. The City of Columbia has illegally transferred millions of dollars despite federal government mandates to fix the aging water and sewer systems. While the argument for local government says that the alternative projects benefit residents of Columbia, those who pay for the utilities who do not live within city limits do not benefit from these projects. Do people who live in North Columbia actually benefit from the renovated Bull Street or the new baseball stadium? There becomes a moral question as to whether or not the people who pay the services are actually receiving their money's worth, especially when there are failing systems and polluted waterways from sewage leakage. Is it an environmental injustice to assume that people who live further away from the city should not benefit from funds that they helped generate? Not to mention the majority of these people living outside city limits are less wealthy and have more minority status than those then. There's more focus placed on frivolous projects that benefit the wealthy than focus on something as important as clean waterways and reliable sewer systems 
essential services that directly affect residents' quality of life.